Well, welcome to Women in Ministry, When a Woman Becomes Powerful Platform. I am Minister Karen Long, and it is my honor and my privilege to deliver God's word to you. I'm simply a vessel. The Lord is coming. And I don't think enough ministries really minister on that. We talk about everything in church, but do we remind the people of God that Jesus is soon to return? And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So where are you in your preparedness for the coming of the Lord? Come on, let's go into the Bible. Matthew chapter 25 is where we'll start. It's a very familiar passage. We all know it. We've all read it. We probably did Sunday school lessons on it. And sometimes God takes the familiar to just go a little deeper for us. Or just to make his point clear. Jesus is soon to return. And I don't want him to catch me with my work undone. That is where he had me all since I've known about this invitation. That we have to do more. Some of us are doing enough, not enough. Some of us are doing just the bare minimum. And when I mean doing, I mean you're being obedient to what he commands you to do. And for each of us, that's different. Yes, we have the tenets of the faith that we all are commanded to live by. But because of the gifts of God that are in us, there are some things we're supposed to be doing in this earth that we have not done. And we ought to repent for that because he's returning. He's coming. You have to be prepared for that. So let's go into the word, Matthew chapter 25, and we're going to read the entire parable of the ten virgins, verses 1 through 13, and I'm a fast reader. So in the, in the word of the Lord declares, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. For our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly I say to you, I do not know you. Lord, I come before you, asking for your wisdom, your strength, and your articulation to be able to declare what you have given to me this day. Lord, prepare the hearts of all of the women listening. Open their hearts up, God, to be good ground where your word can go in, Father, and do the work that it needs to do so that souls can be saved and this world evangelized for the kingdom of God. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen and amen. amen. I want to take you back to verse 7 because that's really where the heart of what God is giving to us today is. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And I want you to write these three words down because I'm a teacher. That's my dominant gift. Um, write these three words down. Lamp, light, oil. We're going to be focusing on those three words. Lamp, light, oil. You are the lamp. Each of you are the lamp. The light is Jesus in you and the oil is the power of his Holy Spirit so let's go back to this scripture it says and at midnight a cry was heard behold the bridegroom is coming go out to meet him then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps the Lord wants me to tell you that there's some things you're gonna have to cut away from your life he's returning and so we can't be playing in every area we can't be engaged with every people. You've got to be called 
and set apart for kingdom work. And if you want to be used for God in this last hour, because we are in the last hour, discern the times, discern what's happening, wars, rumors of wars, strange weather, earthquakes happening. These are the last days. And I know you've heard it, all of your Christendom, but I'm telling you, we are closer to the end than when we first believed. Jesus is returning. He's coming for us. So are you prepared? That means you're going to have to cut away some things. That means you're going to have to cut away some people. That means you're going to have to cut away some places. You can't take the anointing everywhere. You have to stay undefiled and keep your garment white. If you want to be pure and holy, you're going to have to sacrifice in some areas of your life. That is what sanctification is. Yes, salvation was free to all of us. We confess with our, our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord and we were saved. But to be sanctified, it's going to cost you. It is going to cost you sometimes your family, sometimes your friends, sometimes opportunities. You will have to say no because God said no. How willing are you to be obedient to all that he commands for your life? He's coming. Have you been obedient to everything that he's told you to do? And if you haven't, this is a great place to repent. This is a great place. He is just, he is faithful to forgive, so you don't have to walk around with that weight. You can ask right now, Lord, I have not been faithful in that area. I have not obeyed all that you have said, so Lord, forgive me. You can do that, and he will. You have to cut away. You're the lamp, and he's the light. The illumination of Christ is in your life for his light to shine. So wherever you're going, the light of God needs to be recognized. Amen. Whatever you're saying needs to be the word of the Lord. It can't be your own thoughts. It can't be your own message. If you're gonna be sold out for the kingdom of God, you have to be yielded in every area. That means I don't get to say what I wanna say. I don't get to do what I feel. I am his servant and I am being used for his glory. Yeah. That is being trimmed and that's being full of his light. Yeah. And you have to have his oil. This is when a woman becomes powerful. You don't become powerful if you don't have the spirit of the living God inside of you. And sometimes our oil gets low. You're giving out, you're praying, you're interceding for others. Some of you counsel people. Some of you have children and spouses that they need ministry too. You're giving out. You got to make sure you get into the presence of God and get poured back into. Keep that oil in. Keep it full and keep that lamp trimmed and burning. I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 12. This is still a prophetic word. Jesus is soon to return. Luke chapter 12 verses 35 and 36. And if it gets good, we'll go to 37. But I wanted to read this with regard to the lamp burning. And it reads, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. And you yourselves be like men who wait for their master when he will, t will, will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may be open to him immediately. I want to talk about the, the very first phrase, waste be girded. Because when I read this, I thought, oh, girdle of truth from our armor. And it is in regard to that, but it's not necessarily talking about truth. You do need to have the truth of the Lord, the word of God operating in your life to walk this life. But this is about being prepared and ready to work for the kingdom of God. And so let your waist be girded talks about Back in the Bible days, the ancient days, men wore robes. They didn't wear pants, they wore robes. And so in order, even in warfare, when soldiers would war, they had to gird their, their hem of their robes up so that it didn't interfere with them running or walking or even their armor or their, their sword. It wasn't in the way so that they can kind of move with a little more fluidity. And so that's what the Lord is telling us. You've got to pull up that girdle. Pull up that hymn. What's in your way? 
that is blocking you from doing the things of God or going to the places that God has directed you to go, walking in his commandment, walking according to his will, walking when he tells you to go. What's in your way? And why haven't you pulled that girdle up? Why haven't you pulled that hem up? Some of the things we ask God to do, it really is for us to do. We have become slowful. We have become lazy. The church is not as impactful as it used to be. I've been saved since I was 12. I'm 53 now. And the church is not the same. It is not impactful. And people mock the church. But this is God's body. We are supposed to be the most influential, the most powerful, the ones who are not just performing miracles, but we're bringing correction. And we're doing it in love. The church doesn't embrace everything. It calls out sin. It tells you that's not the way of God and loves you back into fellowship. That's the church. Where's the light? What's in your way that's preventing you from walking according to his principles? Pull that hem up. Get that robe out of your way and trim that lamp. Cut away those things. Cut away those people and allow the light of Christ to illuminate from you. We need to sit and hear sometimes of areas that we are missing it so that we can be productive and fruitful for the kingdom of God. And we can do more, let's be honest. There is more that needs to be done. Look in your community. Look at what's happening with our young people. Murders every week. It is unimaginable that humanity is this unkind, ungentle, unruly, unthankful, unholy. This is the world we live in. Where is your light that's shining right in your community? You don't even have to go far. You don't have to be in a platform like this. What about your neighbor? Does your neighbor even know you are a believer? Have you done anything for your neighbor that will cause them to see that there's something different about you? There's a love in you that I've never met before. And when have you had the opportunity last to just evangelize? Just simply been a, wit a witness to the effectiveness of Jesus in your life. It doesn't take a track. It doesn't take you having 10 minutes to take up somebody's time. Just on your job. When someone says, why are you always smiling? Because I love Jesus. How come you're not mad when the boss sent that email? Oh, because I know this is not my source. Jesus is my source. This job's just a resource. He's going to keep me, and I pray for this company. That's why we're prospering, because I'm praying for it. Where's that oil in you? That's evangelism. You don't need a bullhorn. You don't need a Jesus t-shirt. You just need five minutes to tell somebody what Jesus has done in your life. That's light. That's light, and that's what we are commanded to do. He is coming. Yes. Have you done enough, women of God? Yes. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5, and we're going to start at 1, and we're going to keep reading until Jesus say stop. Yes. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. And I want to go back to the parable where it says that all of the virgins, wise and foolish, all slept. They all slept. But when you are wise and full of God's oil, you sleep differently. You sleep with one eye open. <laughs> You are watchful, you're sober, because you know the enemy is shrewd. 
and these are the last days. So you can't afford to be in a slumber where you are not aware and discerning of what's happening around you. You've got to be awake. Awake in the spirit realm. That means you've got to have a prayer life. You don't know what is happening in the spirit if you don't converse, converse with God. If you're in relationship with God, you have to talk to him. There has to be communication with him so that you can know what his will is for your life because it will be different because we have different paths. So I can't tell you what you should do for your life unless God leads me to. But if you are in relationship with him and having a conversation with him, he's going to tell you what to do. He's going to tell you where to go. He's going to tell you what time to do it. Oh, he gets specific. But if you don't have conversation with him, you don't know his voice. We are in the last days and he's coming. Build your house on good ground so that God knows who you are, so that the light of his sun shines through. Make sure that lamp is trimmed and burning. The church is not as impactful as it needs to be. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a part of nothing that's not right. I don't want to be a part of anything that is not strong and powerful and influential for kingdom's sake. Not me, because we can pick a lot of things that we can be a part of that are influential, but I want it to be for God's glory and not my own. And that should be the heart of every woman. Be prepared. Get ready. Jesus is returning. I want you to understand that you have to be ready for the return of Jesus. And getting ready means you've got to really assess yourself. The word of God says, let a man examine himself to see if he's in the faith. Man, we have PhDs in examining everybody else. But can you turn the spotlight on yourself and identify where you are missing it? Do your own diligence to look over your own life to see, God, I don't pray enough. I have Netflixed and chilled until I am an iceberg. <laughs> we have to examine ourselves. Do your due diligence to see what it is you're entertaining yourself with. Because if it's not of God, if it's not edifying God, cut it off. You have the power to do it. His spirit lives in you. And if you need to turn a plate over and you can't do it, call a friend. I have fast buddies. I said, you need, you need us to turn the plate over? We got it. We got you. I will fast with you. You want to you wanna fast? Let me know. I got you. I will turn the plate down for you because I want us all to grow together. I don't want to leave anybody behind and I don't want you to be left behind. He's coming. And so we can get us right and we can share righteousness with others. But let's deal right here in the house. I'm speaking today to an audience that I believe are believers. This isn't a message for the unbeliever. This is a message for those of us who already sold out and said we are his. He's coming. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm going to end on this, verse 17, 16. Jesus is coming. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Just in case you didn't believe he was coming, it's written. with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. If you're not living to leave, I don't know why you're living. You cannot be a believer and you don't want to leave here. This is not our home. He's prepared a mansion for us in the sky. That's where I want to go. And I want to be with him forever. Everything that I do, it's for Jesus. Everything that I say, it is for Jesus. Every trial that I endure, it's for Jesus. Every affliction in my body, it's for Jesus. Every storm. Every wind, every moment, it has to be for Jesus. 
What are we living for if we are not living to please Jesus? Hallelujah. My soul is stirred. Oh, because he's coming, children. He's coming for us. But are we ready for him? Have you done all that you can do for the kingdom? And if you haven't, start today. Leave here today saying, I'm going to trim. I'm going to cut away. I'm going to let my light shine. And I'm going to keep oil because I'm going to get into prayer. I'm going to turn down my plate. And I'm going to begin to study the word of God. Leave Netflix alone and get into the holy word of God. Spend time with Jesus. And it only takes a few minutes. Tell you it gets addictive because once you get in there and he starts cleaning you out, you want to go back because you feel good inside. Make a place in your house that's just you and him. You can have an altar at home. It's not idolatry. You can have a place where it's just you and Jesus. No kids, no husband, no TV, just you and your father. It's necessary in this hour because he's soon to return and he's coming for us. Come on and stand and give God glory. Take home with you those three truths. Trim. Let your light shine and keep your oil up. Keep a reserve of that oil in the name of Jesus.